sinkholes for when the watching the paint dry competition is just a little too scintillating, right? Well, now just wait a minute. Like, did you see that? It's a good walk in the woods, and if, and if you know anything about geology or if you want to learn anything about geology, it's a good opportunity to go in where you can actually see those physical layers of rock as they uh, transition. As you drive around Alpena County looking for them, they seem to find you. Like the Brewski sinkhole, otherwise known as Michigan's Grand Canyon, it plummets 112 feet into nowhere. If you put the Grand Traverse Resort at the bottom of the Brewski, just about six stories would rise above ground. This is a very kind of a, a unique system that is creating this unique biological environment. And uh, uh, they're actually very cool to look at too. If admitting they're cool feels a little forced, kind of like admitting your parents are cool, well, it shouldn't feel that way. Just look at the impressive twin Stevens sinkholes. Just watch your step around them. And as you drive around, the massive sinkholes appear randomly and out of nowhere. Just remarkable acts of nature. And for years, they were shrouded in mystery. The mysteries were that somebody may have uh, uh, gotten swallowed by a, an on-land sinkhole and ended up in the lake. And you know, that, that was confounding. During Alpena's logging days, when inland lakes and rivers were used to transport timber, reports circulated about materials and people being sucked into Lake Huron. People didn't know some of the inland lakes were actually sinkholes and that groundwater underneath the sinkholes connected them to Lake Huron. So the water connection from land to the lake is very true, but uh, uh, full-sized vehicles and people are not going to go through them, that's for sure. So, so that's, that's, that's sort of the mystery behind these systems, and, and it's actually a fun, uh, fun to go back and look at some of these uh, newspaper articles. Some basics of geology explain Alpena County sinkholes. Michigan, many hundreds of millions of years ago, was basically an inland sea, and those inland seas uh, formed limestone. And as water then, the groundwater percolates through these limestone areas, it actually dissolves the limestone, flows out, can create caves, and then as the caves can actually erode to the surface and form uh, a cavern. And that cavern, once it gets to the surface, it'll collapse, and that's how a sinkhole is formed. Now recently, the exploration of these sinkholes has moved into Lake Huron. What's unique about these systems is that we have groundwater coming in, and, and groundwater isn't unusual in and of itself, but the groundwater that's coming into these sinkhole systems is, is going through a layer of rocks and dissolving sulfur and salt. Some of the, the water that's coming into these systems is actually somewhat salty. Doesn't sound like something you'd find in the world's largest bodies of fresh water, does it? It's a very, very different environment than the surrounding Great Lakes. The surrounding Great Lakes, especially northern Lake Huron, is very uh, pristine, it's very fresh water. And here you have this system that is, is pushing something into it that's, that's uh, uh, a very weakened form, but it's a, a, almost a saltwater environment with, with no oxygen. The environment is almost alien. As you transition down into the sinkhole, you'll come to this rocky outcrop and, uh, and, and move into an area that uh, almost looks like you're on another planet or something like that. The things that are growing inside of the sinkhole are fed again by those, uh, by those waters that have sulfur and uh, uh, chloride in, in them and that sort of thing. And these systems then, uh, uh, when they photosynthesize, they don't create a green uh, algal cell, they create a purplish algal cell. With a purplish glow emanating, divers can feel like they're exploring a different world perhaps going back in time. You have this, uh, this unique biological environment forming. Uh, one of the really uh, uh, cool things about these systems is that uh, they may be an analog for uh, what the early Earth was, was looking like because you had uh, these, this, the, a very similar type of, of algae, that, uh, this purple algae was growing. Uh, in, in the early earth. You had no oxygen in the atmosphere at that time. And these early organisms uh, are what then uh, uh, multiplied and, and actually pushed oxygen into the atmospheres. Oh, and another thing, what's growing down there could be the root of the medicine of the future. Well, one of the interesting things that we've been doing with uh, the University of Michigan Life Sciences Group is uh, sampling, taking some of the samples of these uh, algal cells that are growing in the bottom, the purple mats that, that we talk about, uh, and actually taking uh, those, uh, those algae and, and doing lab tests with them to see if we can develop pharmaceutical products. And uh, in a couple of cases, these, system, these uh, uh, algal cells have turned out to be potentially valuable in, in, in fighting uh, diseases. The past, the present, and the future. 
Explore it all near Alpina. Now, who was it who said sinkholes wouldn't be interesting? 